if you if you show like loving kindness and acceptance to a person, yeah. even if that person is your enemy, like you can conquer your enemy with just like pure loving kindness. How exactly does that conquering happen like that? It's because like as the enemy tries to like hurt you and strike you down, but you only respond with loving kindness, it's like they become aware of the the wrongness in their actions in doing that, you know? Like they'll realize it's better to be good. Yeah, like he was his thing was like because if if I try to fight you and you fight me back, then it's like my fighting you is kind of justified. Right? Because you're trying to fight me now. So we're both right. fighting. Right. But if I try to fight you, but you, like, don't fight me, you know, then I'm abusing you. And I'm just, like, I'm evil in a way of, like, it's clear that I'm the aggressor. When has that, have you seen that work in your life? It worked to expel the British from India. I mean, it was coupled with, like, it was really hard to be a, a satyagrahi. Yeah. You know, like, he... But, they, I mean, they got their asses beat. You know, they got abused badly. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, as far as Gandhi was concerned, it was, like, the only philosophy that would not continue to perpetuate violence. And even if, like, you thought somebody was out of line and they were more powerful than you, that, like, to just try and, um, you know, overthrow them with aggression and antagonism wouldn't work. Right. And that it was only, like, through loving kindness that you could kind of, like, purify. I, I've heard of that before, but, like, I find that hard to believe, but maybe, like, it has worked, you know? Yeah. Have you ever used it? I do it all the time, yeah. you feel like it works? It definitely works better than the, the alternative, which would be to be aggressive or to be um, hurtful. Right. I guess my instinct is to be an asshole. Yeah. But I, maybe I should try that more. But in this case, for example, I felt wrong, but I wasn't really an asshole back. You know, I was no. like intense, but I feel like I don't feel I was like this, justified in what I said. I don't feel like this applies to what happened in your job. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is not related to that. I don't but, know if it works because like, I think it works like between people. Yeah, but not between like institutions. Yeah. But even still, like even with people, I think like you're probably like some people might not be receptive to it. Yeah. I like the idea of scaring people too, which is bad. Yeah. If they deserve it, you know? Mm -hmm. Presence is a weird idea. Yeah. It's like, you know, when something is present, it's you know it, not intellectually, but in your body. In your bones. And yeah, and like you're felt, you feel it, you know? It's yeah. like, it's like the difference between like looking at something and being like, oh, that, make, that makes me happy. Yeah. Like reading about something in a book and be like, that makes me happy versus like experiencing true happiness, you know? Yeah. It's like, when there's presence, like, we feel it in our bodies. That I got drunk crazy. on Friday night, and I drank too much by accident. And, <laughs> like, I threw up in the morning. Oh, wow. And it was awful. I felt like shit till like, 12. What yeah. were you drinking? Just wine. Oh, I, think, wow. I didn't eat enough, and I drank too mm -hmm. much wine. Maybe because I met, mixed red with white. I don't know. No. But I had, like, four and a half glasses of wine. So that on an empty like, stomach, too? Not an empty stomach, but, like... Not full. Like, you know, I would have been hungry in, like, an hour. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Perfect. So you ate Chinese food and then drank wine. <laughs> and I felt like shit. And like at the end of the night, I knew I'm like, oh, this is gonna be one of those. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, that shit's rough. It is. Yeah, I messaged my friend. I was like, yo, do not let me drink that much ever again. She's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you guys had a great time. Though. No, it was fun though. Yeah. It was like I haven't had like one of those. It was like that space episode we watched when they go clubbing. Yeah. It yeah. was like I was thinking I was like fucked up. And I kept hearing, like, the, the song in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I rewatched that scene, like, so many times. That was so funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was a combination of watching that show, but I was, like, having, like, a, a real good time. Yeah, yeah. How did you do with the tennis? It was it was a bit tough at first, because I hadn't played tennis in, like, ages, you yeah, know? Yeah. But then we... It was for her, too, but we both got the swing of it. But then it was just, like, fun, you know, just regular tennis. That's awesome. And I was like, and then we talked about, yeah, what's actually like with us? Because she's my neighbor. She was like down the street from me. Really? So, oh, like, yeah, cool. Definitely. So like, Do you like her? As a person? As a, like, I want to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not really, honestly. You're although, like. Not subtle about that. <laughs> although, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but um, this one time, she was real good, though. And I was like, and even my, my friend Alex, like, pointed out there. He's like, yo, what do you think about her right now? He's like, yeah, she looks like real good. Because she's not like. She's not ugly, but it's just like, I don't know. She's not like, 
Or yeah, but I'm I mean, like bang her out of all the girls in the yeah. room kind of thing. You know? But it seems like you want to hang out with her. Yeah, because I want to play like tennis. Yeah, that's cool. And that's she's a, like, she's a fun person too. Yeah. She's like, you, you could get like uh, more encouragement to do exercise that way too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So then I think like it just boils down to just exercise a lot, you know, like helps so much. I think, like, yeah. yeah, it really does. It's ridiculous <laughs> yeah. how effective exercise is and, and like lifting mood, you improving know? mood, yeah. and cognitive function. You feel that way too, right? Yeah. I was looking for a league too. A a league? league? No, no, <laughs> this is going to back up. Oh. <laughs> in, in Justice the, League. In the gym, they have uh, like there's a basketball court. And they have like leagues, I guess you could do teams, but there's also like a basketball court. Yeah, okay. in, inside the gym, and okay. then but it's also like a volleyball court. Like they just put a net, you know. So there's, I think, volleyball leagues too. And I was trying to look for the signage to like see, like, hey, sign up, because there was one for basketball. But I was like, I don't want to play basketball with a bunch of black dudes. I get my <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not in the mood right now. I suck at basketball. Yeah, I I always think about like if I played basketball against like my students, like how bad they would school me. <laughs> You'd be so white. <laughs> I'd be terrible. You would never hear the end of it. Thank you, yes. I would. Word, I would love. Word. I think I will this week. Make it a point to try and play one of them in basketball, <laughs> and just to see how it goes. Like, have them teach you. Yeah. No, I've had them like show me how to shoot before. Like one kid, you know, like I was shooting. He's like, you know, do it like this, and then I was like, okay, and then he would like coach me, you know. So I was shooting, and he'd be like, like this, do this, do do do. And it was cool, and it it did help. So I'm not unteachable. You think that helps the teacher student relationship? Absolutely. Having yeah. them teach you for a change. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe they would gain some perspective. Either. They do critique. When we do critique, we do like a sketchbook critique. Mm -hmm. They, I put my critique book out there and they critique the shit out of me. Really? They, they rip me they up. They love that shit. <laughs> yeah, they do. It's just like, I'm just like, I was just waiting. Like, <laughs> it, it's like, you know what it is? I, I, I hope it's like this because, it, it, but it does kind of hurt me sometimes. It's like when you're a little kid and you like fight with your dad or something. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you can try and like hit your dad as hard as you can. And like, whatever you do, it's like, you can't kind of beat him. Like he could always just like yeah. disarm you easily. Yeah. So, but like you go all out on him to try and like bring him down. So and it's all a bunch of, so that's how I feel. I'm like dad and they're all like pummeling me like <laughs> totally with little fists. fists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they do like, you know, they, it, I feel like they don't. They don't go too hard on each other, but they go really hard on me, you know? And yeah. I think, like, with practicing going hard on me helps them go hard on each other more. Because mm. I show them, like, I could take it. And so they're like, this is wrong, 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 wrong. It's so weird. It's like, they find so much shit wrong with my drawings. And it's like, then they look at each other's and they, they don't really say much. It's a social shit. You know yeah, so. it's interesting. It's interesting. But um, point being, yeah, no, like getting having like that relationship with them where they it's what not all do, like authority. It's really good. What if you do a secret? Like, is that even possible to do a secret critique where you don't know whose work it is? Yeah, but it couldn't be like in the school. Like, I actually tried to do something like that once. I got old work from Carney High, and I was going to bring it to my school and have a critique and be like, okay, here's other students' work. It's not anybody you know. It's just students, you know. So you could see work that's kind of like a similar tier as yours and like be as critical as you want without worrying about it oh that's a good idea so as i feel like you know that to, like do that is to prevent that awkwardness i guess but i feel like some of the, it, we should like feel that awkwardness and everybody like everybody should just go along with it anyway you know what, what do you mean by that like when you say it would be better to have anonymous critiques so people don't get offended or whatever or they feel comfortable yeah i feel like they should just they shouldn't, like, we shouldn't have to be anonymous. You should just, like, do it, be uncomfortable, and, like, everybody to see that and, like, just play with that dynamic, you know? Yeah, but the reason is I would say that people don't do that is because... I know it's disturbing, but I don't yeah. know. I it's like, like a form of pain, and people are very pain-adverse, you know? It's yeah. like people don't like to throw themselves, like, into pain, you know? But I feel like... So you, you have know, to, like, train uh, them. Part, part of me feels like maybe we should do stuff like that. Because, like... <laughs> It'd be better. Maybe so people explore like how they really feel. Yeah, and they get used to pain. That's well, that's the idea, but it's hard to like if people aren't willing to do that. It's hard to force them to do that. Yeah, you know. It so you hard. have to, if you have buy-in, like if you have people who are like eager to give it a try, and have the like fortitude to do it properly, because like that's the thing too. It's like it it can devolve into impartiality real quick. It can devolve into. Um, ego struggles very quickly because people like are evil yeah 
Not evil, <laughs> but <laughs> ignorant, to use the Buddhist kind of approach. But I guess it's kind of this, it, it was funny, it's like, I forget where I heard this, but I think it was Sam Harris, actually, like, in Buddhism, the conception is not like good and evil. It's ignorance and wisdom. And that like all the like the pain of and suffering like that's in the universe is because of ignorance. Is because of some form of cosmic ignorance and not like a cosmic evil force. And I think that's kind of an interesting um, alternative to just thinking about things in terms of good and evil. <laughs> yeah, I say that like half jokingly, but I think some people really are evil. I do too. But like very few people, you know? Yeah, yeah it's got to yeah. be like a small, yeah. some small percentage. Like, like an actual psychopath is evil, you know? Yeah, that, that is evil. But generally, maybe it, maybe it is more ignorance than anything. Yeah, I don't think most people are out like deliberately trying to do like bad, bad things, you know? Yeah, it's usually not... Uh, I don't think there's a lot of like malicious intent, usually at least. But people still suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I suck too, you know. Yeah, they can do negative things with yeah. both of them. Yeah, yeah it's true. Well, then what what is that? Like so a, like a politician knows something could affect and like do this, but he chooses not to for like their own gain. All right. Is that evil? I want to debate like <laughs> bring it back to the word knows. Okay. So let's think about no in two different ways. There is the no, like, to know it as an idea, and there is the no to know it as, like, to be with the feeling of that. You know what I mean? No. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, I know peace and happiness in this moment. I know warmth and contentment, you know? I know in a state of this, I know it, you know? I have known good times and I am in the presence, like, it's like the presence idea okay. again. So he's in it now, basically. So when you say a politician knows yeah. what he's doing, it's like, does he know he's causing pain to others? Does he know that? Like, does he understand that in his being that he's hurting somebody as if like he was cutting them like in the flesh in front of him? I don't like think that. I mean, think about like, those like war water situations. What was it Flint and stuff? Yeah. And it's like, all right, these people are obviously suffering. It's like there's gotta be at least one politician that could do like something about it like immediately. And it doesn't. And it's like do they not know? <laughs> it's like they gotta know it's like how ignorant could you be? Or it's like how much of a wall can you like put up between you and the event, you know, pretend you it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I still don't get what you're asking because I, underst I understood your no distinctions, but I don't understand how you're relating to the politician. So Because you're saying, does he know in what way? Like It's like, he, in the sense that he's consciously doing it? Is that what you mean? Right. Like, or, is he just, or is he just detached from it and he realizes it, but it's not really like in his bones? Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think like when they do things that hurt people, like... Well, it's hard to say, but I think like like some of them probably don't care. Some of them are probably like, I know this is hurting people, but really it's helping more people. Like and like it's like a lose lose situation, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like war. Like we have to fight or everybody dies, but if we fight, a lot of people are gonna die anyway. Mm -hmm. So like it's better to kill a lot of people than like everyone, you know. That could be the case too. Yeah. You know, maybe there is a, a question of something that we're not understanding. Yeah, I think that's a problem too when people like shouldn't politicians so much because people never grant that point, you know? It's like they just, oh, he did this and they hurt all these people. But like, why did he do it? He didn't do it to hurt those people. He was fixing this like dam, let's say, you know? And now he just saved like $3 billion or something, you know, like, or something like that. Yeah. But of course they fucked things up too, but like. Yeah. That's crazy. I wonder what the politicians think about the media. Like, does that really bother them? Like, genuinely? Like, I wonder how they relate to it. If it, I would imagine, I'd like to imagine that they're interacting with it. They see it as like an interactive kind of like tool that they can work with. But I wonder, like, they're always criticizing them. I wonder, like, does that like, get to them? Are they bothered by that? Yeah, I guess you gotta have thick skin for that. <laughs> well, they have like whole departments like devoted to like public relations, you know? Yeah. So it's like when you have a squad of people that are like managing your public image like that. It's like, I guess it makes it somewhat easier to navigate. 
It's like a weird kind of celebrity, a politician. Yeah, yeah. It's like the first celebrity. <laughs> yeah, it's true, actually. It's like when you read this stuff, like, like I was reading a bit of Seneca, and it's like because it, of Tim Ferriss. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, not. It was because of Tim Ferriss, but it was actually because of Maria Popova from um, Brain Pickings. You know, Brain Pickings. I've heard of her name, but I don't think I've listened to that. Yeah, Brain Pickings is like a newsletter, and it's oh, like okay. just like interesting kind of reading about like life philosophy and science and things like that and uh but anyway i was reading tim ferris's tools of titans and maria popova is like one of the people he talks about and she recommends on the shortness of life by seneca which but tim ferris is also really into seneca so i got that and i read that real quick and what did you read exactly um just basically that you know, I didn't understand it too well, <laughs> but it was like, life is short, or no, rather, life is pain. Though. Life is much, <laughs> life is much longer than people realize. Right. People complain of the shortness of life, I but that's know. because people are not living properly. People don't have like a proper perspective on like what it means to live life. Okay, and through mistakes of like poor planning or self-pity or um, basically your own kind of doing it wrong. You right. like diminish the quality of your life and you feel as though you have less life to live. That's an interesting point. And what, that, what, what, where were you reading that? On the, on the shortness of life. It's pretty, life. it's pretty short. <laughs> and, um, but the only thing is like, when I read that, I didn't, aside from the fact that you can, you should like seems like he advises you to like not overdo it and to you know practice philosophy not to generally do what's the first thing you said not to what overdo it oh, okay. you know it's like don't get crazy with shit okay like, don't try to take on too much mm -hmm. or all right so i'm just trying to think because it's like when i read it i was like okay but what what is he advising to do like i understand the critique that he's making of people. Right. But what did, what did he advise? Right. And I thought he didn't advise much, but now that I'm thinking about it and kind of summarizing it for you, I realize like he did give several good pieces of advice, among which is like, you know, those things work for your, he says work for yourself and not for another person. Um, don't get crazy. And what was he going to say? Some other shit too. Practice philosophy. That's a big one. He says that when you practice philosophy as like your life's work, then like you're part of something eternal. Versus like if you like, let's say like you're a politician, which he brings up a lot of politicians in this thing that are like the busiest people. They can't like ever rest. They're always like working, working, like to make it like better and whatever their agenda is, right? And, uh, you know, he kind of says like, you know, that that's going to be like temporary. And then, but like when you practice philosophy seriously, then you have, you're part of an eternal tradition of knowledge. I like philosophizing my life. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty interesting. But now I think I'm going to try and stop reading nonfiction. Really? Yeah. Stop it altogether? Yeah. Take a break. Why? You want to get lost in the mysterious more? Yeah. I've fiction? read this in 4-Hour Workweek, actually. He to talks read more of, fiction? Uh, not necessarily to read more fiction, but to take a low-information diet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, one of the things that really stuck with me in reading about that was, like, a critique that says like, you know, if you're always consuming information, you're kind of like not using your brain properly because your brain should be like inventing and being creative and original. But like, if you're constantly consuming other people's ideas, like you just like grab those ideas and are like fitting them over things in your life instead of exploring like the true reality of possibility that your mind can conceive. That's a good, interesting point. Yeah. yeah so I thought I'd give it a try for a little bit. So where does that, like, end that? Do you, what do you not consume now? No social media. No pornography. Okay. No pornography. <laughs> no, no social media. Um, 
Like, no news or television. Yeah. Like, television is okay. But but I'll just cut that out anyway, because I don't really watch. So no news, no social media, no nonfiction, like, informational texts. It's like the only information you can consume should be reading fiction or listening to music. Hmm. For a period of time or, like, just forever? It's a diet. So just like any diet, you know, it's like, what is your objective in doing it? You know, for me, yeah. it's like an experiment. So yeah, that would be interesting to try. I'm going to try and do it for one week and see if I notice anything and how I feel. Mm. And, uh, but I think, you know, it's, I'll have to try and make like a conscious effort to think a little more, but that's okay. And it'll be nice if I do decide to read, to read fiction because I love fiction. You could read Dune. <laughs> Reread Dune. Yeah. So there's plenty of good shit. And listening to music, like I really stopped listening to like music on my own. For a couple of reasons, but it'd be nice to hear more music again. I, f- I feel like they say Spotify is really good to hear good new music, so maybe I should get that. But I don't want to pay for it. Yeah. I don't really need new music. I don't feel like yeah. I feel like there's nothing. You're stagnating, bro. Why? Do I gotta, gotta go in the future? You don't have to go in the future, but there's... Even if the music's not new, there's still music that's new to you that's good. Oh, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and really look at, like, all kinds of different shit. But there's still new music that's good, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably someone that's really good right now that we haven't heard of. Yeah. Imagine that. I've been listening to a lot of EDM. <laughs> <laughs> really? More than anything else lately uh, on my own time. When did this start? Oh, like yesterday? Or like... No, no, like... <laughs> I don't know, like... I started, like, maybe a week or two ago. I was really surprised listening to Dead Bow that, like, he keeps like changing things in a beautifully like transformative way and i think all edm music is kind of like that was it in the dead mouse or is it both i always saw it as i think it, i don't know if it's d-e-d or d-e-a-d m-a-u dead mouse five i thought that was his name wow. what do you think I, i've been saying dead mouse because the five is supposed to be an ass i'm like haha because oh. dead mouse five sounds stupid right? never because I always hear people say Dead Mouth, but I thought that one at first read his name too. But oh, I no, no, no. I, I thought it was Dead Mouth 5. I didn't realize it was supposed to be read like an S. <laughs> that's, that's how I've been doing it. I'm not hip. I didn't pick up I mean, on he's that. he's got one. a mouse head, right? Yeah. So it's like Dead Mouse. But I figured Mao was just like short for mouse. M A U? Yeah. That's not how you spell mouse. I know. <laughs> but I get the idea, like when I see the mouse. Right, right. But apparently I don't get the idea that the 5 is the right. S. But thank you guys for clearing that up for me. So Dead Mouse, then. I listen to Dead Mouse. I mean, I hope I'm right. No, I'm happy. I feel like you saved me from, like, a tremendous embarrassment, actually. <laughs> so thank you. Maybe I think that's how it is. Your least. kids probably don't listen to them. Yeah, they don't know. And I don't even know I listen to him. But anyway, I was checking out his music, and I really liked, like, the way, like, he has... If you listen carefully, the way he, like, moves between, like, sections in the, in the, in the like, the, the track, it's like... It's so beautiful and gradual. And he has like these little tricks where it's like he'll kind of like blend two things together so that you can't tell like where things are changing. And I really enjoyed listening to that. And at first, like I thought it was an accident. Like it was so subtle. It seemed like a mistake. Like like when you're playing a riff and it's like you start playing it wrong a little bit, but that kind of becomes the new way of playing it. I thought it was something like that. But then like it kept happening and happening and I was like, wow, he's really like playing like that. Like that's how he thinks. Like that's so fucking cool. So I really enjoyed hearing that. What song is this? What song does he do that in? I don't know. Just cause I like, it was just random shit on mm-hmm. like the playlist, you know, the, but like, you know, even like the do, 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 do. I mean, that's probably like every dance song, but do. I've never listened to the kind of music. I feel like it, it's kind of cool in a way. Yeah. Maybe the he's better, but I feel like it's too repetitive. It's very repetitive. If you're dancing, that's what you want. Though. Yeah, I guess. You yeah. want that shit to never stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you're doing tricks, and that's why people start doing tricks with it because the music is boring. So they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's, yeah. Like, the drugs make their hands look cool. Yeah. 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 Well, you have to have a project with this music. You can't just listen to it. Yeah, that is the case, I think, because, yeah, you don't want to, you're not trying to do anything that, like, disrupts yeah. the, like, energy of the dance, you know, you're, you don't, it's not like prog rock where it's like, 
It's like not like that, you know. It's a just keeps going like yeah, that. The pulse never stops. That that's probably like one of my least favorite kinds of music. That kind of dance music. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm gonna start making EDM. Like, yeah. <laughs> I got so into it. But you can do what you can do whatever you want. Yeah. But the, what else? What's your least kind of music? My least yeah, genre, like that least favorite. Um, mumble rap also, I don't know. yeah I was gonna say maybe some of the trap music I've mumble heard is rap. pretty pretty deplorable deplorable I don't like too much some of that shit is like hot garbage what's that <laughs> some of that shit is like hot garbage mumble rap yeah I don't know. <laughs> and it's like man all, like the snare sounds the same in all the songs you know what it's mean? fucked yeah. up they got that same snare sound it's like yo man got a different sound it's like, you don't have to do the same thing all the time, you know? Just do something else. Mumble over a different sound, you know? Yeah. It's like, why are you mumbling mumble all over a different sound? Yeah. I don't like that. It's like, the the genres are like adjectives now, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think like, that this is a shout rap. It's like, it's like regular rap, but I just shout all the time. It's yeah. like, you can, you can shout and mumble within the same song. Yeah, mumble there's and no, shout. Like, there's no limits, bro. They were twisting and shouting back in the 50s. That's too. <laughs> country music I also usually don't like. I don't like... That's like my least favorite. I don't like stadium country. I don't like that, like, the top 100, like, pop country. But like I Jewel. like country songs. I like Jewel. I would I would listen to Jewel and enjoy, like, her music. But, like, I like real country, like, sad ass, like, right. acoustic guitar songs and, like, lap steel and... There's beautiful songwriting in country music. I mean, there's some elements of country that I like, but like I get yeah, like a typical country song I usually don't like. Because like I mean, just think about Bright Eyes, dude. Think about how much country influences. Yeah, like that. I like it. You know, it's like, dude, you could hear it so much in his music. Sprinkles like that, I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's not full country either. No, yeah. But like, it's not. It's not at the same time. It's not that far off. You know, it's really not that like far away from the reality. I feel like his music is so desperate in a way, but I, I like that's what I love about it. Yeah. And he says it like in interviews, like that guy he's talking to has like really sad music in a way, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like sophisticated sadness in a way, like the way he expresses it. For like sophisticated teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, I don't know. And then like, it's really mean. He's like a sadder Bob Dylan kind of. Yeah. I, I've heard of him from like, he's like the emo king kind of. It's like people talk about bright eyes. And then even people that don't like emo kind of like. Yeah. Like he has really great lyrics, I think, you know? Because I was actually going to say before, like, emo is one of my least favorite types of music. <laughs> like, I really don't like emo music. Yeah, I, mean, I thought you were into that. No. no I don't like emo it was, music either. I always it's just wolf playing. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I endured so much of it. I mean, there was, there was, like, some stuff I liked, but, like, so much of it, like, I thought was, like, whiny and annoying and, like, overly sentimental. Which I think is funny now because I'm playing all this, like, sad boy shit lately. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like emo <laughs> music, but... Yeah, I think there's emo, like, that kind of, like, like uh, poppy <laughs> emo rock, and then there's, like, some people call emo, like, sad things, oh, that's emo, you know? Yeah, but I'm talking about, like, the haircut, and, like, the yeah, yeah, really yeah, tight yeah, pants, yeah. and the spiked <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> Remember that, like, young part with the yeah. real man? <laughs> um, like, a feminine, feminine, like, yeah, like that, yeah. Yeah. They got their stupid whip piercings and shit. Thank God that shit's over, bro. Yeah, dude, that was bad. I think there's like a pocket that's trying to like, oh, I wish I was there for the emo day. You really? Know? Yeah, but that's what, dude, that happens with every like yeah. scene. It's like yeah. people that yeah, weren't there terrible. had a weird nostalgia for it. It's like you could make a better version right now if you started. It's like, like I see, it's like, like I, uh, I looked up My Chemical Romance like maybe like a year ago or something like that. Because uh, I remember like I liked some of their songs. So yeah, I went yeah, back to like, I'm like, do I actually, did I actually like that or mm-hmm. did I just not know better? And then uh, I found one of the songs. I kind of like was digging it, but then I always read the comments because I'm a sadist. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> or messages. <laughs> but I remember one of the comments was something like, I was like five when this album came out. It's like, I wish I was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've oh, seen wow, it. that kind of shit. And I was doing the math. I'm like, fuck, what's that? It's like, they're 17 and shit. You know, it's like, they're like, you know, this is. Like the age you would listen to that album yeah. when it came out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Comments are like, generally so bad, I think. There's a sick pleasure in reading them, though. Yeah, I know. So, you know what it is? Some are good there. It's like 
any community, too many people like can ruin it. Yeah. So right. if you go to like some shit that has like a thousand views and you yeah. go and there's like six comments, it's like those comments are generated by class. <laughs> so you go to like some shit with like thirty billion views. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, come on, bro. It's like that's what I was thinking about. That's a good point. Anything, anything in general, it just gets ruined by too many people. Like, like Times Square. Like you go to a village. <laughs> exactly. You like go to a train. village. A village is like you know it takes a village to raise a child because everyone's like supporting each other. It's a, it's a small support network. You know, like there's like seventy people, you know, tops, and it's like you all kind of know each other. Blah blah. You go to a fucking mega city like this, and it's just like you don't give a shit about anyone. Everyone's hot at each other. Everyone's like cursing each other. Yeah. Oh, Everyone's like trying to get there. It's like fuck you. So it's like too many people are just like. I think it's a problem. Yeah, I was thinking like some yeah, people are saying now that technically I don't know if it's true, but we're not really overpopulated because people are having less kids, so we're not replacing everybody who's dying. I just read something on that. I don't know if it's actually true, Maybe but I not feel in this country. Yeah, but I don't know if that's true. But to, I'm perfectly mm-hmm. fine with it if it is. And also, I would prefer even if technically we're not overpopulated. For my sakes, there's too many people, so I wish there were less people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like it's crazy that, yeah, the congestion, very this area too, you know? There's yeah. a lot of congestion. Way too much congestion. Sorry. Like that bus always, like that bus is never an experience that you're like, oh, thank God we have buses. Or, yeah, I, guess I, I kind of like, I just see a bus and I get like an anxiety attack. It's, like, oh. it's just, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I am grateful for it in some way, but it is like, a gen, like there is no comparison from like driving a car and being in a bus, you know? Yeah, sure you can have good moments on that bus, but I don't know. Bus is kind of cool because you don't have to pay attention, so it's like you can do like side work. You know what? I started like, oh fuck buses. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> like, I'm grateful for them, but I just don't like buses. Ah, so many stops and the people. It's just like, ah. Do you ever get stuck behind the bus? That's yeah. like the real worst. It's like uh, you're a simulation of being inside the bus. <laughs> like all people in their champagne colored cars that drive super slow. Oh, like, oh. <laughs> I'm like fuck. <laughs> It's always like 99 through 05 or something. I'm like, drive. Oh my God, like, I like put my like, go. It's so bad, man. Some of those people are just so bad. I feel like you should always speed a little bit. Maybe that's the best <laughs> idea, but. No, you should at least, if you're not going at least 10 miles over the speed limit, it's like, what are you even doing? It's yeah. like, do you have, do you not have things to do? Like, why are you on the road? Like, can you <laughs> leisurely drive? <laughs> like, do this is a sidewalk, that? yeah. I it's, feel like anything under 30 is crazy. Unless there's a lot of people or something. Yeah, yeah. Or like a school zone or something. Even 30. Like, you can go 33, 34. <laughs> <laughs> 48. If I get a clear road, I'll do like 40 on these streets, you know. If it's like clear. Like, Scabber Ave, I'll yeah. go fast and shit. Yeah, yeah. You know. That's a speed limit of 35, I think, though. What? Scabber? Scab- yeah. Oh, really? I think. Or maybe at certain points it becomes one. Because it changes, too. And it's like, how do I know? Yeah. Like, I feel like I've got good a sense, generally, like... How the tra- like just follow the traffic, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or it's like just feel it out and don't be a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you know what your car can do. It's like what the limits are. And just don't be stupid. You know? I hate those people that pass you like crazy on the highway. Just like they do the little like burst like a turbo in the video game with their yeah, fancy yeah. car. It's like some <laughs> douchebag like rich person or something. <laughs> like stereotypical douche person. I did that a few times. Though. I, I got that. that sport button now, and it's like sometimes. It would be like one of those where there's a car like this, like dragging ass in the left lane. There's like another car like this, and there's like another like that, and it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? So I'm like, sport mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's different. That's different than like <laughs> like trying to cut people off like a maniac. You know? Oh, that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. I see. It's always like some BMW driving motherfucker. He, he, I remember like yeah, it's, I, like, it's like coming like that, like you coming into into the highway from the uh, what, the exit like entrance, the entrance, <laughs> and like. I'm going, I'm about to get it, like, it's my turn to go into the highway, and he comes from the side and just, like, pfft, like bursts, like, in front of me. Wow. And funny. it was, like, a close call, you know? I'm like, you fucking piece of shit. What the fuck? That is fucked up, though, because yeah. it's, like, what if you started, like, pulling on them? I think I, I, I saw him farther down, and he, like, tried to, like, pass other people in the same way, you know, like a crazy person. Yeah, that's a little, like... Those are the people who crash, and then you have to wait, like, 30 minutes to yeah. like, drive a mile, you know? It's like, haha, but... <laughs> fucked up my day again yeah right no that is true i think like i think that is it does get to a point where it's like people think like it's okay for them to like do that you know it's like let me just overtake everybody that i want because like i want to get where i'm going faster and i feel like i can drive good enough that like i can do everything like 
don't worry about it. Like, I'll just let me go around you. But it's like, yeah. you're, you're all driving together. Like, people need to be aware of each yeah. other. You can't. Team sport, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, people, I think, are okay. But some people, like, are. There's been a few close calls. I'm like, oh, shit, I could have died. You know? Oh, dude, yesterday in New York, like, I wasn't even driving. But just, yeah. like, being in the car and then, like, all these things merging and, like, this and that. It was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's like. So even being like like watching that shit. Oh like, yeah, I've driven in New York. It's awful. I don't want to drive there ever. It's again. really. It feels like for people I've watched like drive through New York. <laughs> it looks like it's like being in a war zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like constant like anxiety and panic. Like people watching for no reason. It's like a meteor's coming. Everyone's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a panic in the movie. Yeah. It's like a like oh, destroying the buildings or whatever. Just people inventing lanes and shit. And like, <laughs> yeah. Just doing like the bizarrest fucking moves. That area is like forever on fire. Like there's so much activity. Yeah. It never calms down. People never decide to stop going. I was coming up with a proposition yesterday. You know how like uh, back in the day, like in the seventies, like they would uh, when the you know the oil crisis or whatever. Mm. So like if your car was like an odd number, you know, license plate, you can get gas on like Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and if it was even, you'd go like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or whatever like that. Okay. So it's like what you do is at least on the weekend, it's like it's like on Saturday only odd number cars could come in. On Sunday only even number like cars can come in. <laughs> it's like cut this traffic by like half at least. It's like, at least on the weekend, it's like, it's like fuck off, take public transportation or something. Take the bus. Yeah. Or go back to fucking Virginia, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the thing that the, I think that the parking is a. I hate more than the, a few reckless people. The parking people n- never park pretty much. Like in this block, there's four more parking spots than you actually have because people don't park close enough. You know. I that. thought that's why they put those fucking lines everywhere. Yeah, but they still don't listen. Like there's a lot. Like there could be one with like two big ass lines for two cars and like a lady parks in the middle. Yeah, it's like I oh, s- this is so snug. <laughs> <laughs> I still yeah. think that people are. Like, that criticism, like, misses the point. I feel like what happens is that people try and make it, like, fit, right? But then people move their cars. And so it makes it look like, oh, they parked. I think at times that can happen, and I'll grant that. But sometimes people really do just park. I've seen people do that. Yeah, because sometimes, (laughs) yeah, and if you, in certain positions, you think about it, and you want to think that, but then it's like, how do they get... It's like, well, that doesn't check out if you, like, try to, like, turn back the wheels of time and pretend, yeah. like, a car was there. It's like, how would that car, like, fit It up? still would never work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's definitely true, things yeah. like that where... Yeah, you're like, right, too. Yeah. Where I... It's like, man, I'm like an asshole now, you know, because I've come back to my car and every other car is gone. I'm just parked, like, weird. So it's like, I do... I do think that is, like, a thing. But... But it's like... Then those things only happen because somebody parked like an asshole in the first place, too. Yeah, it's kind you of know? like a, there's initial, like, fuck up. Yeah. And it, it creates this, like, forever chain reaction of people compensating, like, for the, the randomness of it, things. This was all started by one person who couldn't drive and couldn't park, and then just, we never heard the end of it. It's yeah, like, yeah. Some asshole with the Model T, and just, like, <laughs> went nuts, and just, like, it never stopped. Have you ever been in a Tesla? Um, oh, they're putting charging stations by uh, Wawa. I yeah. know. It's funny because I feel like the people around here are don't have a lot probably generally to like they wouldn't have a Tesla yet they're trying to be those. I guess because people maybe go through there a lot as yeah. a hub or something. It's a main thing they gotta have. That's cool that it's coming up. Around. And I think that like I would not be surprised if installing the charging stations is a form of marketing. Because yeah, I think yeah. if people see the charging station and it's in their town mm-hmm. and then it's there, they'll be like, maybe I will get a Tesla. There's a charging station right there. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it's so, also right by Walmart. Yeah. yeah. So I think it could be how, good. How much is a Tesla? I think it depends. Yeah, but I think like, how much is like the cheapest one? I think like 50000 Oh, yeah, that little? Probably. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's not, that's not yeah, crazy. That's, that's what I was thinking. Like, people buy BMWs and, that's and, not crazy. and, and Mercedes and shit. And, and that's like... And fucking tanks. Yeah, yeah. and the, yeah, SUVs are quite expensive too, yeah, right? Like, and all the gas you're fucking wasting on it too. Driving your one ass around. Like that Jeep that everybody loves, the Jeep oh, Cherokee. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how much does that cost? The little modern one? one? Yeah, well, it's that had so many iterations. The latest so, one? And it's yeah. huge anyway. Yeah, the latest one or whatever. It's probably like... 
Okay. Fifty thousand, right? Yeah. Beats me. I don't but how, do you guys know how the Tesla works? So you, so you never have to pay for that. Like, how does the electricity? We're gonna have to pay for it. You just plug it in. I mean, if you had it at home, I guess you would pay for the electricity to the bill or whatever. Yeah. But like, how big is the bill? Also, like, if you charge it somewhere in a station, do you pay? Yeah. I think uh, I'm just gonna Google this real quick. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm curious. I know the charging stations they had at my school were free. Right. But it's like then you're paying for the school, so yeah. But that was like electric charging station. Fifty thousand isn't crazy. Like maybe in like in a few years, I would buy that if it's good enough. Yeah. You know? Like in five years. Or something. Uh, this is from an article in 2016 that said Tesla will start charging money to use its charging stations. Mm. Oh. Uh, so I guess it was free for a while. How much will they charge? Incentive. This means that those. Because if it's, if it's got to be less. Well, than it gasoline. says here that you can get one of these things for thirty five hundred, thirty five thousand. A Tesla? Yeah. Oh, wow. Dude, dude, dude. That's probably like the lowest. Yeah, but yeah. I also wouldn't want to have like the lowest one. So you're basically paying, I think, for the cost of electricity. But like, how much is that? Like, is it having like a blow dryer? It says <laughs> it would cost 968 to fully recharge a Tesla Model S with 275 mile battery. 968 to fully charge it? Yeah, so $10 for 275 miles. Okay. How and does that compare to what do you get in your tank of gas? Ten dollars for two hundred and seventy-five miles. Yeah. Let's say ten dollars for three hundred miles to make it easier. Mm -hmm. How many miles do I get for a full tank? I paid twenty-five bucks yesterday, and I have like three hundred and eighty like mile range, right? almost four hundred. No, oh, that's that's pretty good. That's so that's good. like you know the estimated range and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me just look how much does it cost to be charged. Hmm. Let's I probably get like a little under that, I would think, but not not too far. And but then I would pay like thirty bucks to fill up my gas if it's like completely empty. Hmm. So that would be cheaper then. Yeah, it's just like it's not gonna be like a lot cheaper, but I guess it adds up over time, you know. Yeah, but it, like that—that that seems like less than half cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They're like a third cheaper, actually. Yeah. All right, my Tesla. Okay. <laughs> I want a Tesla. I feel like I want it just because I hear about them. Something's like I just want them. Like, wait, do I really need that? Next car. Yeah, probably not. And maybe in like years. Then. Make your company buy it. <laughs> Let them rally me. Did you not hear the story? <laughs> So it says, <laughs> I just saw another article that said like if you use your electric car, you'll pay about five hundred and fifty dollars a year, five hundred and forty dollars a year in charging versus if you own a gas powered car for fuel, you would end up paying like um I think it was like fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, a that year. sounds like yeah, that was kind of what we were saying. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe like in the end like it does work out you know like it's not if you it's not crazy to spend fifty thousand when like if that's you're gonna save that much you know? and it's yeah. a nice car teslas are nice fucking cars too they look really cool maybe in like years and like you know when i'm like forward i'll be like get myself a nice tesla maybe they're your next car they say what people own like how many cars in their lifetime i feel like but this car i'm not gonna i mean i'm never gonna spend more money than i have to in a car like this car is great um you know like i'm gonna run into the ground Maybe not that much, but one of the, you know, <laughs> I think it has a few years left in it. Yeah, yeah, it's like new, man. It's like brand new. <laughs> yeah, they, you get at least like 10 years out of a new car. Yeah. Easy. My car, the fuck, my old one. Yeah, you know, that's that's how long that shit, yeah. <laughs> it was 2001. You know? like that shit was and that was, cool. wait, that was, it was a 2001 model, right? Yeah, which means it came out in 2000. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. And you only got the new car this year, right? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's almost twenty years of life in that car. Yeah, and you were just going yeah. still. Yeah, it was a bit like feel. Remember, it was like dune buggy ish. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you do to it? Were you still have it? What? Well, it got dune buggy ish, and then I just stopped riding it because I got the new car, and then I just well, I I was trying to sell it to a friend, and she was being like too wishy washy, and I'll, and then uh, I just like got rid of it. I called uh like one of those towing services to just like junk it yeah junk it did so they, they pay you for it yeah they gave me like 200 or something yeah. in cash so i was like oh i was like i just want this shit gone like, it's like <laughs> a headache. 
because like I don't need an extra car. I'm choosing Quake and like I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like just to like I like selling my dad's car was like he had like an old Isuzu like a pickup truck from like ninety four. I remember that. Yeah, it was a red truck, right? Yeah, yeah, and that shit he sold it for more money than that. But his shit was like pristine. He kept it like in good, like when he got it, it was already still like good, and he kept it in like real good condition. And it's still like useful because it got a bed, you know. I gotta get a car wash. Reminds me, I haven't washed my car since the summer. I haven't washed my car ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I felt weird washing. Yeah. They do such a terrible job. Where you think so? Yeah. Where do you go? I went to many places. Like, what's a good one to go to? Uh, you just heard me. Like, I don't. Know. I gotta wait for the rain. You gotta know? do it yourself. You never go to wash it? I can, you never I, vacuum it inside? Uh, yeah, I've done that. But that I've used like... You do it yourself? Like the stations they have. Yeah. Like there's one by Quick Check on my job and stuff. I went to the car wash, like the one by the Arlington Diner. There's the one right there. Yeah, yeah. Carney wash or something. How was that one? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they, like all these people, they seem like they're working really fast and like, you know, but like they leave soap in the mirrors and like, it's like... Clearly, they're like half ass wiped everything. It's like all these people are wiping, and yet it still has soap, like a lot, like in this area. It's like yeah, two people doing it carefully would have been great. <laughs> it's like seven, like people, like crazy, like you would, wow, I'm amazing. They clean the inside too. Right? Yeah, but it's like the inside is usually more good, but the outside, they always leave soap and like a lot of soap. And I'm like, that happened twice, but that's like, I'm never coming back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know a detailer, but it's like, well, my, because my boss is like, you can just go here anytime like, to clean your car. But it's like 30 minutes away. It's like, I don't want to drive a half hour from, yeah. just to get my car clean. Drive another half hour back. Yeah, I feel like it's a, re- get a clean car. it's a really shitty job, I guess. But like, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. You know, compared yeah. to like other cleaning jobs. Yeah, I guess it, I mean I mean you they're it's like better than like yeah. food waste. You're just cleaning like the outside of a car. You yeah, know? but I guess you have to be outside in the cold and the heat. True. Yeah. True. I definitely wouldn't want to do it, but still, you still you should do it right anyway. Yeah, definitely. Like, what am I paying you for? <laughs> so I got paid more. It's funny because that time, I, the first time I went to that car wash, it was freezing cold. It was last winter, mm-hmm. so I'm just driving away thinking my car is fine. And then when I get to my house, I notice that there's like this like huge chunks of so frozen soap in my mirror <laughs> that I didn't notice. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck! So I had to like wipe it off in the freezing cold. Like I I went and got like a really hot rag like. And I came back and like a freezing cold. <laughs> so they really <laughs> fucked you up. Oh my god, yeah. Should we eat?